Hey, I'm Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'm going to discuss some thyroid panel basics, and I will show some actual patient reports so that you can better understand your thyroid blood test results. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand the test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. There are three main markers I'm going to focus on in this video. This includes thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, and this is a pituitary hormone that affects the secretion of the thyroid hormones. Thyroxin, also known as T4, is a type of thyroid hormone. Approximately 85% of thyroid hormone released by the thyroid gland is T4, with approximately 15% being T3. When looking at total T4, you need to keep in mind that most of the T4 is protein bound. In other words, most of the T4 produced by the thyroid gland binds to a protein, which is then transported around the bloodstream. Free T4 represents a free form of thyroxine in the blood and is what I'll be focusing on when discussing the reference ranges and looking at the reports. We also have triiodothyronine, which is T3. So just as is the case with total T4, with total T3, you'll have most of the T3 bound to a protein and a small percentage of the hormone is free and therefore can bind to the thyroid hormone receptors. As for the thyroid antibodies, I'll dedicate separate videos to each of these, and there will also be a separate video on reverse T3. So that you can better understand these three markers, I'd like to discuss the difference between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So with overt hypothyroidism, you will have an elevated TSH along with a low T3 and T4. With hyperthyroidism, you will have a depressed TSH along with high T3 and T4 levels. Many people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis have subclinical hypothyroidism where they have an elevated TSH, but both of their thyroid hormone levels are within the normal reference range, although they might be less than optimal. And with subclinical hyperthyroidism, you will have a suppressed TSH with a normal T3 and T4. As for the lab versus optimal range, while it's great to see your numbers fall within the laboratory range, you don't want the numbers to be on the high or low side, even if they are within the lab range. And so there is an optimal range for each of these markers, which I'll discuss next. So let's take a look at the reference ranges for the three different markers. According to LabCorp, the reference range for TSH is 0.50 to 4.50 international units per milliliter. And the reference range, as you can see here, is very similar with Quest Diagnostics as they have 0.40 to 4.50 international units per milliliter. But the optimal reference range should be between 1 and 2 IUs per milliliter. And so, for example, if someone has a TSH of 3.5, this will be within the lab reference range of most labs, but it will be outside of the optimal range. And many people will experience hypothyroid symptoms when the TSH is that high. Let's discuss the reference range for the free T4. So according to LabCorp, the reference range is 0.82 to 1.77 nanograms per deciliter. Quest Diagnostics has a reference range of 0.8 to 1.8 nanograms per deciliter. And the optimal reference range should be 1.1 to 1.5. And let's look at the reference range for the free T3. So according to LabCorp, the reference range is 2.0 to 4.4 picograms per milliliter. And Quest Diagnostics has a reference range of free T3 of 2.3 to 4.2 picograms per milliliter. And then the optimal reference range should be 3 to 3.7. So let's take a look at some patient reports. And of course, the patient's names are not on the reports due to patient confidentiality. But here we see an example where the TSH is clearly elevated. 5.409 IUs per milliliter. Free T4 is within the lab range, but you can see that it's less than optimal. And then free T3 is also within the lab range, but like the free T4, it's less than optimal. And here we see some other markers. Now, what's interesting here is TSH is looking pretty good at 1.670, but the free T4 is depressed. It's out of range 0.70. And then the free T3 is also low at 1.8. And there's some other markers. This person's also low in ferritin and also had vitamin D tested. 
And we'll discuss antibodies in a separate video, but you can see here that the anti-TPO antibodies, which are the anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies, are elevated. And here's another report. So this one is more closely associated with hyperthyroidism, as we see a depressed TSH, and sometimes it shows up as being even lower than this. A lot of times it'll be undetectable, like less than 0 0.001. But here we see the free T3 is elevated. We see 9.3, and this lab is using reference range of 2 to 4.4, and free T4, 3.06. So again, it's elevated really with any, any lab that uses the same units of measurements, uh, both of these values will be elevated. And this is just a thyroid panel from a different country. I forget what country it's from, but we see the TSH is actually looking pretty good here, 1.4, and they use a range of 0.3 to 4.2. But again, as I mentioned, you also need to look at the optimal range. So if this was let's say 3.0 would still would be within this range, but would be outside of the optimal range. And then we see free T3, 3.7. So on the lower side of this range, which 3.1 to 6.8 picomoles per liter, and then free T4, 16, which is within range here. And here we pretty much see a full thyroid panel. So we see, we see the total T3, and then we see the total T4, so total T3 is within range, total T4 also within range, but on the lower end of the range at 5.1. Free T3 is actually looking pretty good at 3.6. Free T4 looking okay at 1.0, maybe a little bit higher. It's on the lower ends of this range, but optimally we'd want to see it, let's say about 1.1, but even one is, is not bad. TSH is just the optimal range I gave between one and two. So this is just under that, not too bad. And we'll discuss antibodies and reverse T3 on a different video, but we see here that both antibodies, the anti-thyroid peroxidase antibodies and anti-thyroid globulin antibodies are elevated. We'll also be looking at thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins on a different video, which are the antibodies associated with Graves' disease. If you want to learn about some of the other important blood tests you should consider getting, I would check out the video that just appeared on your screen. If you like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you have any questions related to thyroid testing, please feel free to post them in the comment section below.